And welcome, friends, to this, the Wednesday morning edition of The Grace Hour. We're broadcasting live right here from our studios, which are located at the home of the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks so much for joining us, and we hope you'll stay tuned for the next 45 minutes or so as we continue to develop the theme all week long here in The Grace Hour, subject of the believer's mental health. And I think that it goes without saying that you have two people in the studio today who have some serious mental health issues. (laughs) We're like experts on the theme and subject matter. (laughs) My name is Pastor John Love. Joining me is Pastor Barry Quirk. Um, You know, Pastor Barry, we can can laugh about it a little bit, but the fact of the matter is, um, you know, believers go through—believers have to deal with fear, anxiety— um, you know, pressure from a lot of different locations, and you know, it could be family pressures, it could be financial pressures, it could be health issues. Um, the believer's mental health is a, is a pretty serious issue, and, you know, there's, there's one verse that I would like to just get started with today, and we can talk about it as the program progresses, and that is... Um, from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the scripture tells us, and this is speaking, this is God speaking to us. And he says, a bruised reed he will not break, yes, and a smoking flax he will not quench, which is a picture of the, the vulnerability of the believer, you know, the, the, perhaps we could say the mental health of the believer that's yes. frail, fragile, ready yes. to reach the breaking point. I love that promise because it's God's way of saying, when you find yourself in that condition, don't even think that you'll ever be abandoned because I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to nurse you back to health. I'm going to restore your soul, which he is so capable of doing in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's an amazing point. And, you know, we laugh because we have the joy of the Lord Mm -hmm. and we, two options, we laugh or cry and we decided today we're laughing. So, but obviously mental health issues are no laughing matter. And we, we, yeah. you, you just said that very clearly. Um, I, it's really incredible. So, you know, I think about Psalm 107 20 that says I sent my word and it healed them. And, yeah. and just as a, you know, given away the conclusion at the very beginning, um, God really has provided a provision for us to, to get some relief from mental health issues. And maybe just to set the the stage here a little bit, and I'm sure it's been talked about previously in this week with uh, the other two shows. But according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, um, 264 million people struggle with depression in this country. And another 40 million people struggle with anxiety, right? And these are just from facts and statistics. Um, and as you said, anybody can struggle with their mental health. It could be young people, it could be old people, it could be believers, it could be unbelievers. Um, we're not alone. And that's, I think, a big thing to remember. And mental health issues can develop into things like eating disorders, personality disorders, psychotic disorders, PTSD. So it's, it can really become a very serious uh, issue. Now, for that reason, and I think this is, this is really crucial for us as believers, we don't judge, we don't belittle, we don't condemn people struggling with mental illness uh, rather than condemning them with me- because of their mental illness, we take the stance that as Christians we're to help show kindness and love towards them. And, you know, that's nowhere clearer than in John 13, 34, and 35, where it says very clearly that uh, I give you a new commandment, and that commandment is to love one another as I have loved you, and you also love one another. By this shall men know that you are my disciples if you have love one towards another. So, mm-hmm. The motivation for the show really is to help people. Yeah. And I think it's, um, as believers, we're not immune to mental health issues. I think it's very interesting for me. I've always been a person who could sleep standing up if I wanted to. I mean, I just, I I don't require much sleep, but when I get it, it is solid. Mm -hmm. And I also have been a person who generally is very cheery and has not experienced a lot of depression or, or anxiety, mm-hmm. just for whatever reason, I was blessed to, to be that way. And it's not, you know, I'm not bragging about that, but a very interesting thing happened to me a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I was not able to sleep. And it went one night, and then by the second night, I was 
completely anxiety filled. Um, it shocked me because I had never experienced anything like it. Mm. Uh, to the point where when I went, went to the school to conduct my business, I sat on the benches out front of the school just so I could not, because I was not able to be in my office. It was too confined. And I never really let on to anybody that this was happening. Mm -hmm. But I think it was maybe God giving me a little glimpse into what it can be like. So I wouldn't take it and dismiss it as, oh, you're lacking faith or yeah. just apply that verse and you'll be better. I think it's really, there can be so many causes, lack of sleep could be one of them. Um, yeah. Situations happening in our lives could be another stressor. There's a lot of things, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm thankful actually that God mm. put me through that situation just so I could see when other people are hurting, how real that, that issue is. And you know, I was able to work through it and get rest, but also just comforting myself in the, some of the principles that we're gonna talk about today. Yeah to be able to identify with folks that uh, are dealing with some of these issues. And as you pointed out there, it's a large percentage of the American population. It really is, you yeah. know? And I think it's safe to say that it can be a large percentage of, of the church as well. Yeah. You know, but I think it's one of those problems and issues that people don't want to talk about because a, a believer might hide the fact that they're having some struggles with depression, discouragement, fear, worry, anxiety, because in their minds, I'm not supposed to have exactly. these problems. Okay, I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to have an impeccably perfect thought process, and I'm never supposed to be distracted by any of these issues. And they can even use verses of Scripture to substantiate that right. and to prove that point. But the fact is, um, you know, Christians have broken bodies. Christians uh, live in a broken world. Yes. And Christians can get stressed. Yes. And it's all about making the right adjustments, if that's possible. And in some cases, if that's not possible, then they might have to seek out some medical help yes. uh, for whatever issues are, are, are troubling them at that time. Um, I read something interesting about a pastor. He asked one of his young people in his ministry, he says, why do you come to our church? And her answer was rather fascinating. She said, because you let me be depressed. Hmm. Interesting. And he thought about it, and what she meant was, I can come here and sing some of these psalms that will talk about my struggles, and you don't say, we don't have a place for you, I'm sorry, you'll have to find another church. Yeah. I think it's so important that we graciously open our arms to people that are struggling in some of these areas, because, yeah. um, again, as you pointed out, we can, I, I can identify with what you went through. I had that period of time in my life as well. Yeah. It was actually a, long, a lot longer. It was extended. Wow. I was very concerned about it, unable to sleep and overcome by bouts of fear and anxiety. Mm. And, and, you know, I really finally was able to hone in on the fact that this was all coming from my mind. And, you know, I, I don't, I can't really say how God got me through it. He did, yeah. and he can for anybody that's listening today, but he did, and I got through it, and, and I was just so grateful because I realized I, I've got to be able to uh, stay focused in the sense that I want a mind that's parked on Jesus, right. Isaiah chapter 26, right. verse 3. Right. And then perfect peace is the promise that comes when we are able to just say, look, I'm going to stay focused on Christ to the best of my ability. Yes. And I know that some even listening today might say, well, I've tried that. It hasn't worked for me. That's okay. As you pointed out, we're not here to talk about condemning people, telling people that they're wrong to have these emotions or struggles. We're not saying that at all. We're saying that Christ can offer hope. Yeah, and I want to be clear on my end. I, you know, I think... There's so much focus on mental health these days and stress and living in a stress-free environment that we almost think, my gosh, if <laughs> growing up, we didn't, we didn't even know those terminologies and you just sucked it up and you went forward. And the world is a different place. The stimuluses that are received are different. People are comparing themselves to other people at a record pace. You know, everything that you do online is for likes and for appreciations. And when you don't get that, that's a troubling thing or somebody doesn't respond to immediately and that's a troubling thing. And there's, so there are real life things that can mm -hmm. compound and cause somebody to have anxiety or depression. Um, the other thing is that it was alarming to me. Like I knew as a believer and as a pastor uh, that when I was struggling with anxiety, that there was, 
I should be focusing on the Word of God. And I would put on a message and try to listen to it, or I would read a scripture and try to listen to it. And there were points when I just could not, I couldn't touch any of it. Yeah. I, the, the message yeah. gave me anxiety. Sure. The, so, you know, if you're a believer and you're struggling with this, you know, we're we're saying it's it's real. <laughs> we're not trying to poo-poo that. On the other hand, it is the focus on being still and letting God be God in our lives that helps us through that. Right. And yes. so I would say, don't be condemned if, you know, you're trying, if you said, oh, I tried that and it didn't work, you might have to try again, you might yeah. have to try again. And, and mm -hmm. actually uh, there's, a, there's an exercise that you can do in your, in your physical body. We learned it in theater um, years ago, but you, you can actually relax the muscles of your body by imagining the blood flowing from your toes through all the way up. And I'm not saying that cures your anxiety, but it settles you down enough so mm -hmm. that you can at least relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then to think, you know, as you said, the origin of those sometimes of our depression or anxiety is what we've received in our mind. Yeah. And we can be, we can become occupied with that, you know, yeah. and we can become fixated on that even. And then we don't see relief, even though we're trying all these things in a quiet room or with this music or with that message, but my mind has to be stayed on thee. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's really wh where it comes down to letting God heal us in his time, in his way, building ourselves up in the most holy faith, like it says in Jude 20. Yes. Uh, you know, just believe in God, no matter what my feelings are, believe in God, because ultimately God's power is so much greater than my feelings or my experience. Uh, and, you know, some people will say, well, you know, it can't always be fixed by prayer. Sometimes you need medical help. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I would say to th those people, sometimes it can be fixed by the Word of God. Sure. Like, can't we equally say that God could heal um, in a situation where somebody's challenged? So mm -hmm. whatever it is that God uses as, as his tool, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. whether it's medically or whether it's just environmentally or spiritually, we want God to be the focus of our lives. And even if, if we're medically something's able to help us that still came from the hand of God. That's right. It's, you know, God designed That's, that. That can be his provision. It, it could be his provision. Yeah. yeah. And again, people can experience some chemical imbalances in mm -hmm. their physical bodies. And so physiologically, these issues can be addressed that yeah. way by There's the medical profession. nothing they can do about that. It's, it, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you certainly can't condemn yourself for right. that. Right. So um, uh, Rabbi Duncan, who was a 19th century Scottish theologian, said that there is no pit so deep that Christ has not gone deeper still. Wow. Wow. That's important for our listeners to know, too, because you always need to know, because at some point that discouraged, depressed, fearful soul cries out and says, God, don't you care? Mm. And the answer is he does care. Yes, he does. And we have a high priest who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities mm -hmm. in all points tested like we are, in his case without sin. In our case, not so much, yeah. <laughs> right? And I that think, is true. I think that it's good to also note that, that Christians sometimes can experience this uh, a mental health crisis or even mental illness because they're Christians. Now, now what do I mean by that? Well, it's... Because they are especially targets of the devil. Yeah. And and I don't, I mean, I know, I've heard these stories that people have gone to churches and they've shared with those when they get in these churches that they're having these mental health issues. And some people, and, and next thing you know, people are saying, well, we got to cast out the demons. It can have nothing to do with demons. Right. But I think it's safe to say that once you and I accept Christ as our Savior, we become targeted by the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world, Satan himself. Mm -hmm. Let's not disregard that. Let's Correct. not say that doesn't even exist, yeah. because it's it's a fact. So he targets all mankind, but he especially hates God's people. Absolutely. Right? I, I, told, I told a story to our kids yesterday in Bible class when we were in Indonesia years and years ago as missionaries. Right at about dusk, you know, I looked up into the sky and it looked like birds everywhere. I thought we were an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> um, but I realized very quickly it wasn't birds, it was bats. Mm -hmm. And the bats were landing in the fruit orchard. And I figured it out. Oh, my gosh, these are fruit bats. And just an un incredible amount of them. Uh, the bats landed 
in the trees that had fruit on them. They didn't waste their time landing in the trees that had no fruit on them. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a good picture there of what you just said, mm -hmm. that believers pose a threat to the kingdom of God. And of course, they're going to be put under extra pressure to the degree that Satan is allowed to. And um, we know that, that that can happen. We see the book of Job that God actually gave permission for his man to be tried. And um, to, but really with the, the understanding that he's going to prove you wrong, Satan. Yeah. And so, you know, when we think about the finished work and we think about all these things, and it's one thing to know about it. And I think that's the, was the awesome part about me experiencing this uh, was, mm -hmm. you know, it's not good enough just to know about it, but I want to experience the peace of God in the yes. midst of those situations. Yes. And I think part of it starts out with Matthew twenty two thirty seven that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, which is our emotions, which we know respond to our thinking, mm -hmm. um, with all our soul, which is like, you know, our physical abilities, things that we do in our, our lives, and with our mind, which is our mental faculties. Mm -hmm. So if we can love the Lord God with all our heart and our mind and our soul, you know, that's a pretty strong, you know, base for God to be able to control uh, the fears that we live in. And there was a question about, can you explain the difference between the fear of the Lord and the uh, fear of things in the world? Well, the, th the fear of the things in the world is based in the fact that we have no control over anything and I'm afraid of death, I'm afraid of taxes, I'm afraid of attacks, I'm afraid of this and that. You know, all I know is that as a believer, the fear of God is that I revere him and I respect him. God is not a respecter of, of people, right? Um, but we can pass the, the time of our sojourning here on earth in fear, mm -hmm. right? In reverence yeah. of, of what God has for us. And, and this is how we, you know, the question really is, as believers, what are some things that we can do to, to keep our minds healthy? And one of them is to stay hid in what God says about us rather than what we think about God. Yeah. And, and when we live in the, the promises of God for us, like we've been talking about, you know, we can start to begin to experience the peace that God has that comes with living in his promises. And even when we experience temporary setbacks from anxiety or, you know, the promises of God are yea and amen. And, and I can rehearse that. I can put myself around people who are going to reinforce that. I can come to the body of Christ. Like you said, you let me be depressed. I come to the service. You let me be depressed. In other words, you let God speak to me, right? You don't put me off and say, this church is only for people that are upstanding and they're like, good Lord, we're, we're a hospital. That's you know, right. it's amazing right. that emergency any of us, room. emergency room, yeah. and, and it's a miracle that any of us are able to, to be able to be there. And yeah. thank God that he allows us to be there and we can get healing through the word. Amen. And you know, when, when salvation comes into a person's life and they're born again, um, that, that gives them peace with God. Mm. And, but there's another kind of peace, the peace of God yes. that guides and governs and administrates in our souls on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And both are so critical and so important for the believer to experience. Yes. We have it positionally with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. But the peace of God is that daily fellowship and communion that we have as we walk with God here, down, uh, here on the earth, and and I think it, go, going back to the fact that we that that statement that we made that Christians can have mental illness because they're Christians yeah. is that the Christians Christians are especially conscious of their sins yes and easily cast down and in other words somebody might say well that's the problem with your faith and your Christianity it makes people guilty no 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 the whole world is guilty. Yes. There are just some of us that are willing to acknowledge it and say, yes, I have. I've sinned against God. But if we are especially conscious of our sins, which we are, we're very sensitive because the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. But we've got to be on purpose even more conscious of what God did about our sin. Yes. We've got to be ever more conscious about the finished work of Christ, conscious about the blood of Jesus, conscious about the fact that God has separated us from our sins as far as the East is from the West, and cast those sins behind his back, and has forgotten them, and promises not to deal with us, nor reward us according to our sins, mm -hmm. 
and iniquities. So yes, yeah. we are especially yeah. conscious of our sins, yeah. but I like to think that we can be even more conscious of what God did about our sin. Yeah, otherwise we're living in the consequences of our sin rather than the victory of his delivery, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I love what you said about the peace of God uh, and knowing the peace of God. And, and actually, this is true for comfort. It's true for anything. Like so many times we want comfort, right? And I remember Pastor Shower preaching a message about the man who goes home at the end of the day. He's had a crazy work day, and he goes home, and he wants to just climb into his his lazy boy chair in a dark room and and pull a blanket over himself and maybe turn on his TV or read a newspaper and be that's his comfort, right? Mm -hmm. But instead he returns home to a wife who hasn't seen him, a child who wants to jump on his lap, you know, the dogs barking, everything. And and where's my comfort? Where's my comfort? Where's my peace? Where's my peace? Well, Philippians chapter four says that the peace of God comes from knowing the God of peace. Mm -hmm. Right? It doesn't come from being put into a situation that I feel comfortable or that I feel peaceful. Mm -hmm. it, we, we come to know the God of peace, and we understand that whatever state we're in, we can be content with him because mm -hmm. he gives us peace that passes understanding. And that's really the beauty of what you just said about uh, what am I reckoning on? You know, I recognize my sin, and I know that my depravity is what brought me to this place where I need salvation. But when I fail now, it's a, it's a momentary blip. You know, it's, it's an, That's right. it's a, it's not my identity. It's, it's an event that happened to me and, and we can come back to him and we can say, Oh, the glorious victory of God is still true today. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these challenges that come up by way of anxiety or, and really what is depression Depression is discontentment, right? And we see it in the in the psalm. You know, the psalmist says, why is my soul disquieted within me? Like mm -hmm. we recognize there are things, and sometimes they can even be righteous things, right? We can be, we can be walking with God and somebody who we love dearly out of the blue is off in left field somewhere, and we're bummed by that. You know, we're saying, my gosh, we're, what's going on? I'm, I'm trying to walk. And it, it challenges us. Mm -hmm. And we could meditate on that, and we could let that become our, our source, our food for the day, and we'll be miserable. Yeah. You know, but instead, I think what we're saying is let's reckon on the fact that those are real circumstances. They really are. It really happened. You know, there's an accident on the highway. I have to turn around it. Yeah. Right? I got to turn around it. I got to, I got to, avoid it. I have mm -hmm. to get beyond it. And I can't live in the fact and just park my, my car and say, oh, I guess my day's ruined because there's something that happened in front of me. Yeah. It's, it's like we, we live as believers with very tender hearts and the sin and the trouble and the chaos and the suffering of the world greatly impacts the heart of the believer. Mm -hmm. But we're living in a broken world. We are. And that's not going to change. We're going to be detained here until we go home to be with the Lord. So it's not that we have to be, you know, develop a calloused soul towards these kinds of things, but we just have to put them all in perspective. Mm -hmm. A broken world, broken bodies, broken hearts, but let's focus more on the one... In other words, well, let me say it this way. We could easily stare at the storm, or we can stare at the one who walks on the water during the storm. Mm. And we have to make that decision in our lives. Yeah. And when we look to him... Um, you know, it, there's hope that we find. And, and it's not that the Christian is going to be, you know, 100% joyful all the time. It, it joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength, to be sure. But we may not be characterized by joy 24-7. Mm, right. There may be heartache. There may be sadness. When there may be loss of a loved one. I mean, all of these things we have to deal with, and God knows we have to deal with them. And he gives us his provision to deal with them. Yes. I mean, to grieve over the loss of a loved one, is that legitimate? Perfectly so. Absolutely. In fact, the scriptures even tell us that it's something that has to be done. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we could pretend that bad things don't happen. We could bottle it up, and we might even be good at it. We might be good poker facing through our, our life. But, you know, that's not what God says. God says, cast your burdens unto me. He doesn't say, don't have any burdens. Mm -hmm. He says, listen, when you have burdens, cast them unto me. That's right. Right? Because I care for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we go through the death of a loved one. Mourning is for a season, but it's real, you know, and mm -hmm. we, we have to give ourselves grace. We start to feel guilty about 
our own existence. Why am I here and they're not? Or whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. and it could be very real. Uh, you know, we, we have to give ourselves grace, and we have to be able to focus our eyes on mm -hmm. Christ and his provision in the midst of that. So, you know, it, this is not like... Again, to reiterate, the, the person who goes down the, the road of getting help through a counselor or through um, a therapist or whatever it is, however God leads a person to get help, it does not exclude them from having the deliverance of the Word of God. Now, a, a therapist in the world might not have at their disposal, you know, they're very strong in the world of psychology, but they might be lacking in the world of theology. Yes. And I'm thinking that you know, of course, as believers, we're hoping that somebody who's balanced in the understanding of what the mind is, but also the healing powers of the Lord, mm -hmm. and can marry those things to give us godly counsel, um, but to keep us, you know, in mental health as well. So it's it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, we think about on the daily basis, we need renewal. Mm -hmm. We need refreshment. Yes. You know, we need to go to sleep at night because our body literally needs to shut down and be renewed. Mm -hmm. And our mind needs to stop and rest. Mm -hmm. And and Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be renewed, right? Yeah. Be be by the Spirit, like yeah. be refreshed in our mind and have it happen on the regular. And uh, so I think this is something that we can't lose sight of either is that, you know, we need God's mind each and every day, right? Mm -hmm. um, we need to know that like Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, if you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, mm -hmm. which Christ who sitteth at the right hand of God, set your affections on things above, right? Yes. Not on the things of the earth. Um, and we could be looking to the earth for solutions or the earth's wisdom or the world's wisdom. God's saying, just focus your attention on me and let me heal you. I've sent my mm -hmm. word to heal you. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. Psalm 34, verse 18, uh, reminds us, God says uh, that he is close to the brokenhearted and yes. saves those who, you know, are crushed in spirit. Yeah, I, I love mean, that. You know, that's so beautiful because that means he's there for them, and he's not going anywhere, and he's not going to give up on them, you know. He's not going to tell them to straighten up, you know, and deal with it, you know, and get over it. Yeah. I mean, some things... He does say, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, maybe one of those things would be failure. Right. Um, I, I, I love the the image of Joshua after the defeat at Ai in the book of Joshua, and, and he's crushed by this defeat. Shouldn't have happened, hmm. but it did. And and he now, you know, he's thinking, well, what's going to happen next? And God just says, hey, get up, you know, yeah. get up. You, you fall on, on your face, just get up. Yes. Uh, there's there's still much land to be possessed, and there's still a plan in place. Um, we've got to isolate that very quickly and move on. So if you are a believer today and you've been crushed by life and, and your problems or your circumstances or whatever it might be, just know that God is present. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Mm. And yeah. if we just cling to that promise, I remember, you know, potentially going in for a, a serious surgery once that the doctor said was necessary. And I just remember it being in that hospital room uh, that night and having believers praying for me, which is always so important, um, and just taking Philippians 4, 6, which says, be anxious for nothing, wow. but in everything by prayer with supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Yeah. Um, and I repeated it. Every time fear uh, would, would find a way, try to sneak into my soul, I would repeat that verse. Now, some people would say, well, you're just kind of brainwashing yourself. Well, whatever, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> I was filled with the peace yeah. of God yes. in that hospital room. And then only to have the doctors come in the next morning and say, we, you know, we don't think you need that surgery after all. Wow. So sometimes fear lives up to its acronym. Fear is described as what? False evidence appearing real. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a good way to remember yes. how, you know, what an acronym for fear, right? Yeah. Because sometimes that's all it is. It's false yes. evidence. What's true is what God says, mm -hmm. and we can take it to the bank. Yeah. I mean, you think about the child who's scared to death to get a needle, right? Yeah. yeah. And they are so freaked out. They I become still am Ill. at times. Yeah. <laughs> One and of my think, fears. And you think about it, right? Like yeah. the, the little pinch that yeah. you get is so minimal compared to like, you know, I had blood drawn the other day and mm -hmm. and uh, the, the lady who's 
drawing the blood, she puts the armrest on. I said, oh, that's good because I tend to faint. And she looked at me and her eyes got <laughs> wide. And she said, holy. And I said, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, you know, and she, she put the needle in and yeah. drew two things of blood. And I'm watching it going, wow, some people really pass out and get queasy about this. For me, it's not a big deal. There's other things that are. Sure. Uh, but, you know, that little pinprick, and we're f- so fearful of it. I know. And, and the truth of the matter is that it's the fear itself, the false exactly. evidence, right? Yeah. Now, I like what you said about in the, the psalmist saying that he is near to the brokenhearted. Because you think about a coach of a team or the CEO of an organization, he distances himself from people who are the losers on mm-hmm. the team, mm-hmm. right? It's like somebody deal with that guy. I, I don't have time for that. I got to deal with the winners. Mm-hmm. This is so contrary to what the mind of Christ is yeah. because actually he says, I'm near to you. I feel, I, you know, you have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. Right. Um, you have somebody who is walking through it with you, somebody who is closer than a brother, somebody who wants to feel your pain mm-hmm. to help you through it. And this is beautiful. Like God, mm-hmm. God doesn't crush the, the bruised reed or snuff out the smoking flax, but he actually cares for us. Mm. And you would say, well, I don't know. I don't know. Is that is he weak? He has to hang out with the weak. No, he is our strength. That's right. Right. Our strength is made perfect or, or in his weakness mm. or however that verse goes. <laughs> yeah. But, but really the, the picture of him being so close is so contrary to what we might think in our natural. And I think part of that is the reason that we don't believe that he can take us out of the circumstances. And But it's it's absolutely false and that he wants to meet us right in our circumstances, right oh, where we're at absolutely. and lift us up. It, there's a reason why Christ went through his Gethsemane. Yeah. Because he knew we would go through ours. Wow. And if he got through his, then he'll get us through ours. Mm. And that's just so important for us because he did suffer. Yes. You know, that was did he experience fear? Perhaps not in the same way that we have. But I mean, he he I mean, when the scripture says, and you just mentioned it in, in Hebrews chapter four, that he's touched with the feeling of from the cradle to the grave. Yeah. He knows. Yes. Okay. And someone would say, Yeah, what about sin? Well, yes, he knows he became sin for us. Yes. Instead of identifying with us in our sin, he took our place by bearing our sin in his own body on mm-hmm. the tree. So he, again, when you don't know what to do as a believer, and, and, and all of the options that we have even touched upon and mentioned during the broadcast today have failed, there's, there's always this option that remains for the believer. Just let God love you. Yeah, yes. Right. Yes, it's it's of all of the books and booklets Pastor Stevens has authored and all of the books and booklets that pastors on our staff throughout the years have produced, that's the best selling booklet of all time. And it makes sense as it to does. why it is, because sometimes there's nothing you can do except let God love you. Yeah, it's the two my two favorite parts of the the book of Jude are, you know, build yourself up in the most holy faith. And keep yourselves in the love of God. Mm. Because that is the most profound advice we could ever get. First of all, know what God says and keep yourselves in the in the consequences of what he says. Because mm. what he says will bring you pass peace that passes our understanding. It'll yeah. bring you joy that is beyond comprehension. Yeah. Comfort that can only come from the one who has, as you said, experienced it in. You know, not only did he take sin upon himself, but he didn't even, like, the reason we sin is that it's pleasurable. Yeah. But he didn't get that whole part of the sin deal. No. He only got the consequences part. That's right. He paid the consequences for us, you know. Um, But the idea of us being able to be comforted in our darkest moment, you know, and and we do have, as believers, we have dark days in our soul. You know, it's, I think that's important to say again, is that people somehow have this concept that if you're a believer, you should be strong enough to never experience mental health issues or never experience anxiety or never experience depression. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Because at some point in our life, we could be fearful, you know? And I think about a soldier getting to a battlefield and the reality of all his training all of a sudden becomes its reality. You know, before it was theoretical training, it was, this is what you do if you see your enemy. This is what you do when you get out of the 
the vehicle. This is what you do. And now all of a sudden they face the reality. Yeah. And do you think they're fearful? Oh, man, they're filled with fear, but they're brave. They go anyways, yeah. right? Yeah. The courage is they go anyways. And for us, you know, we don't have an uncertain end like they do. That's right. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen to any one of us? Our physical bodies can be taken away from us. You can't mm -hmm. take away our eternal life. That's right. And this temporary life that we have is temporary. Mm. <laughs> it's here for God's pleasure, and I get to experience it. And um, But it's a vapor, and it's gone. Mm. And, you know, in our mind, and I, I understand it's easy to sit back here and say that when you're sure. on the operating table, you might think differently. Sure. But I think really the peace of God is that we, that I have, you're in my control. You know, you, you are here. Any circumstance that happens to us when we have the mind of Christ is an opportunity for him to glorify himself. Yeah. If we don't have the mind of Christ, then who, you know, we are, we are like uh, hopeless people, you know, yeah. because we have nothing that, that can bring us any satisfaction mm -hmm. or any joy. And, and again, we're not, uh, we don't want to make light of, of this, these issues that we're talking about, the mental health of the believer. But when you put it in, in or look at it from divine perspective, um, God says that it's our light affliction, mm -hmm. and it's for a moment. Now, again, that's not his way of saying, hey, you're making too much of a big deal about what's going on in your life. Right. It's just from divine perspective. And it's working for us. Think about that. Mm. The mental health issues that some people are experiencing, experiencing today as believers are going to be employed by God. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> He's going to employ those periods of time that yeah. you are experiencing in your life that you say, and it's okay to say it, they're the worst moments of my life. Yeah. God yeah. says, I'm going to employ them, and they're going to work for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Yeah, that's that's like beyond comprehension. It is. But that's the beautiful thing about the Word of God is it doesn't rely upon my comprehending of it. That's right. right? This, is, this is a life of faith. And so many times I can say, I don't really understand how that's possible, but when God says it, I don't have any doubt. Because if he says it, that's enough. He's, a, he's proven himself over and over and over to be faithful to his word, right? Amen. And he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness in 1 John 1, 9. Faithful means he will do it. If he says it, he's going to be there no matter what. And just is he's able to do it. He's mm. the only one capable of doing it. He's the lamb without blemish, mm. without spot, from before the foundation of the world, who is the penalty for our sin. And... He's faithful and he's just, and that's our hope. Our that's hope it. is that we can place our trust in him, mm. and, and he can also deal with the effects of our, our mental health issues. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, in a very tangible way, um, we've talked about prayer and how important that is, not just for ourselves to be praying, but to have others interceding and praying for yeah. us, but also the church. Yes. You know, that's the tangible expression of the body of Christ, that's, you know, you might read in your Bible that, you know, that God loves me, and that mm. might just seem so unrealistic to you yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But then you come into the presence of the church, the body of Christ, and tangibly, they love you. You experience They it. embrace wow. you. They shake your hand. Yeah. They tell you how good it is to see you yes. and how important it is that you're here and how much they need you. Not necessarily, you know, you don't know how much we, you know, yeah. you need us, but they say, we need you. Um, we all find our special place in the body of Christ, and that's why the church is that, that place of healing, that place of hope, that yeah. place of health, yeah. where we can find hope and help and deliverance and healing. Yeah, and I, I think about that little comical uh, saying that the pastor, or actually a man says, uh, his wife says, honey, time to get up for church. I, I don't think I want to go to church today. No, you got to go to church. No, why? I, I don't know if I can want to go. You got to go to church. Why do I have to go to church? You're the pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. actually, can we be opposed by the devil in our mm -hmm. souls? Can we be confronted with, you know, a, an atmosphere that does not want, we don't want to go. We don't want to look people in the face. We don't want to be responsible for the message. We don't want, mm -hmm. I don't want to shake somebody's hand. I just want to live in my little cocoon today. Mm -hmm. And, it's incredible that what you just said, we go there 
saying, okay, God, I need you. And God not only uses us, but the body says, thank God for that portion. Mm -hmm. Thank God that you pushed through that. Yeah. Right. And, you know, yeah. we talk a lot about the body being in the right mind, but how about the pastor who has to confront that all the time? And mm -hmm. I don't know about you if you've ever experienced it, but before any message that I've preached that God's used in an amazing way, mm -hmm. Always came a good argument with my wife, or a sure. challenge in my home, <laughs> yeah. or right? God using us despite ourselves. Yes, and yes. I think every single time I go, "Wow, it is the grace of God." Because if it was up to me and the way I left with my rotten attitude, mm -hmm. you know, it would have been a terrible message. But mm -hmm. God somehow saw fit to use the preparation that He gave me to His glory, and you know, we're spirit filled because He fills us with His Spirit, not Amen. because we are anybody. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it's important, and we're going to wrap things up here in a couple of minutes, but it's so important that we, it, just in a practical way, the believers need to remind themselves, keep saturating your soul yes. with the promises of God. Yeah. You know, keep... I, I read of this story in, in somewhere in the northern northwestern part of our country. There are... It's, the, it's this forest, and it's it's been... It maintained itself for over 250 years or wow. something, despite now other parts of the country and other forests in the country, lightning strikes and those forests are destroyed because the lightning starts and sparks the mm -hmm. fire and then the forest is destroyed. But the certain forests in the northwestern part of our country, uh, lightning strikes, but it doesn't destroy them. And the reason why is because the ground is watered. It's wow. it's so moist. It's saturated yeah. all the time with moisture. So the lightning can strike, but it doesn't destroy mm. the forest. You know, you can't avoid lightning strikes in life. They happen. But if your souls are well watered, and if your souls are, are just watered with the Word of God on a consistent, continual place, basis, those strikes will not destroy your soul. Wow, that's so good. Yeah, and that's it, so and that's good. the reason why those forests exist for hundreds of years Yes, without being destroyed. Yeah, that's the reason why we need to maintain our, our, our lives like in the, in the Word of God, right? Like um, how can we be stewards of our mental health? Well, by trusting the Word of God, right, and by being saturated with the Word of God. I think about a couple things here just as we close um, about fear, right? The Bible says in Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, I'm with thee, you know, don't be dismayed, uh, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. These are, these are just the, the Lord speaking to us. Mm. And verse 13, I'm the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your, your right hand and says to you, don't fear, I will help you. Right. And how about Joshua 1, 9? Uh, have I not commended, commanded you, be strong and be courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Um, and again, Psalm 23, 4, Philippians 4, 6, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we can trust. We don't have to be fearful. Uh, we can build ourselves up in the most holy faith like we talked about in Jude. And these are, again, just ways that we can maintain yeah. uh, our saturation with that, that prevents us maybe from a lightning strike in That's our right. lives, something coming down. How about being comforted? You know, like be comforted. First, uh, first, second Corinthians one, three through four, mm -hmm. blessed be God, even the father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them, mm -hmm. which are in trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of yeah. God. And wow. this is what you were saying about the God, the Lord employing our, mm -hmm. our difficulties, That's right. how we can, we can, um, you know, we can encourage others and then ca casting our anxieties upon him in first Peter five, seven. And then lastly, just the healing that comes from the word of God. As yep. we said, we opened the broadcast by saying Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them. Jeremiah 17, 4 says, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. And then lastly, in Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Amen. And these are yeas and amens, right? These promises are that, of God. The promises of God that we don't have to add to or take away from. We can say, this is God's mind. And, and when we're 
you know, if if we need help, mm-hmm. get help. Don't yeah. don't yep. don't ignore it. If your doctor has put you on a prescription mm-hmm. to get your lithium in balance so that you can have a, a proper thinking process, don't don't deviate from that in the name mm-hmm. of spirituality. But on the other hand, saturate ourselves with the word of God, believe God for a healing, let God do the healing of our minds and our, in our lives and give us the comfort and peace that comes with it. And he certainly will do that. One of the greatest preachers of all time, Charles Spurgeon dealt with great bouts of depression and look at how greatly he was used by God. Some of his messages find hope and comfort in people's hearts to this day. Mm. So again, even in the midst of it, Mm. uh, God has a plan to use you and to raise you up and to, again, bring health to your heart, to your mind. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, friends. We really appreciate it. And we'll be back tomorrow because tomorrow's broadcast is going to focus on the dark night of the soul. Mm. How can we get through it? Does wow. God have a plan and a purpose to get us through the dark night of the soul? Well, tune in tomorrow and we'll give you some insight as to how, he, in fact, he does that. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, and more. Until tomorrow, may God bless you.